Hello. How are you guys? Did it say I was scheduled? That was really weird. That took, I'm sorry I went, it took me so long to go through those thumbnails because I was kind of watching the live thing going, oh, it says I'm scheduled, but I didn't schedule it. So maybe it just automatically does that when I go live. Anyway, I'm Sarah Me. This is So So Live. And um, today we're sewing the Morgan Jeans by Closet Case Patterns. They are a um, five, uh, I was about to say five pocket jean. They are a button fly, um, not a zipper. And all the rest is about the same. So if you've um, sewn a pair of jeans that are zipper fly, it's got all the bells and whistles with the coin pocket, back pockets, front pockets, and the waistband. Um, it's got the belt loops. Uh, the other difference, major difference between that, the fact that it's button fly is that it's non-stretch denim or non-stretch. Hey, Karen. Hey, Sydney. How's it going? Um, so if you don't have denim around and you want to use something else like I am, you have a few more options. So that kind of opens it up. I'm kind of making a lightweight pair of cropped non-stretch pants with a cuff. I may look a little weird, but I don't care. I think they're going to be cute. So, hey, Malin, how's it going? You and your epic knitting projects. <laughs> I saw those. So I was just making myself a cheat sheet for the button fly. It's actually sewn super similar to the zipper fly. Um, and I've actually never made one of these. So I'm going to practice sewing one at the beginning and then Later on when I do my pants, hopefully it'll be a little more seamless. So if you're here just for the button fly, I would fast forward. I'm hoping future me did a pretty good job on them, um, or at least it looked like I knew what I was doing. So <laughs> otherwise, I'm sure there's a plenty of tutorials out there, but I do kind of figure things out on the fly and no pun intended. <laughs> Yeah, a fingering blanket. Exactly. I know. She's got that, the epic knitting things. All right. So just looking things over here. Yeah, I swear this is sewn almost identically to the zipper fly. You just don't, or the, as the zipper fly. Um, and if you need a zipper fly tutorial, I do have one and it's a dedicated video. I think it's like 11 minutes long. It's pretty short. Um, just note that I don't show you the whole pocket part of it. So make sure you do your pockets and then do that zipper fly. But it's pretty straightforward. Sewing a zipper fly is not as intimidating as you think. It's just like seven straight seams. So I know, right, Karen? I'm wearing this vest all the time. And you guys, this is my rationale. I don't want to only wear it when I walk the dogs. So they don't associate me putting the vest on with going on a walk. So that's my rationalization. Plus the blue, it looks really good with my Lucerne blouse, the birds. So hello, Dawn. Hello from California. How's it going? Double fingering. Yeah, well, still, Malin. <laughs> All right, so let me just, uh, I was just to the end of it. I just want to make sure I have this really badly you can see how bad my penmanship gets when I'm writing quickly it's like a sort of gibberish um hopefully understandable by me <laughs> so all right so yep we do that this is wait I just want to pay attention to right here someone should do a video on this no, I'm just teasing <laughs> along the raw edge of the raw edge of fly extinction oh okay So I should fly if I should seems okay. Okay. I think we got this. All right, cool. Let's uh, mark this page with something. What do I have around here? Oh, ha, there we go. All right. So this is the Morgan jeans that we're making. Sorry, I could have had that up for you guys. So like I said, they are button fly, non-stretch. Hi, Claire. How's it going? It's snowing there. You know, I just saw someone post in, there in Cleveland that that was snowing there. So you must be, are you in the States? You can never tell. Everyone's everywhere here. So I don't want to assume. I will say it's, it's drop dead gorgeous here. Um, it's perfect. The spring and the fall here are, they're just incredible. It's like 
perfect temperature. I don't even need my vest. Like, the, like I feel like totally comfortable. It's still, it's gorgeous and blue. Um, it's really nice, so. All right, so let's see here. Oh, and this is like a close up. Sorry, I have the autofocus off so you guys don't get nauseous. Oh, this is a better one. Look at that. All right. So let's do my little um, trial here. Let me make sure my phone is off. And we'll do this. So the bad news today is, you guys, I had to do the buttonholes before we started making these. So um, you know, I, I can't even make these without doing the buttonholes first. So I'll talk to you a little bit about that. And I'll give you some tips on doing that too. Ah, okay, Dawn. Yeah, okay, yeah, you guys are kind of close to each other. <laughs> Snow, dang. I mean, maybe that makes the shelter in place feel a little bit cozier. I don't know. Maybe we're going stir crazy too. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> oh, you know what, you guys? I've had so much, um, I don't know what it, you'd call it, if it's called engagement on YouTube. Something um, helped me unlock um, something called channel memberships on YouTube. So I'm gonna look at that and see if some, it's something we're interested in. I think honestly, it's a way for people to kind of subscribe monetarily to the channel, but I don't really understand it. So I'm gonna look into it. I've already disabled monetization on my channel, mainly because I feel like those ads can be kind of annoying and kind of interrupt your flow. And I honestly don't make much money from them. I mean, I shouldn't probably throw it away, but at the same time, I'd much rather you finish the video and feel happy with it and come back, you know, so. All right, so let's do this here. So if you, well, let me just do my little trial here and then we'll talk a little bit more about some of the finer points of sewing this. Um, but the first thing you do is, okay, so I've said this before, you um, always look at when they say left and right, as if you're wearing it, unless they don't say that, um, unless they specify otherwise. We did run into a pattern recently that was really confusing. But um, so this is the left leg, it's as if I'm wearing it, and you're going to finish this edge here, this curved fly here. I'm not gonna do that, I did it on my the ones we're gonna sew today, so um, you're gonna do that. I find it helpful if you're using a serger to clip this first, so there's a dot on the pattern right about here, I know that's scary to clip that, but it's okay. You, you have to clip it no matter what you do. and You cannot move forward without clipping it. So clip it for your serging. And so when you put it in your serger, this is what I do. You, you kind of have to start from the bottom, which is even worse. <laughs> but in a way you get that part over with, right? So fold your pant out of the way like this and put it in the machine. I mean, really wrench it back, right? So I'm gonna reassure you on a few points here. If you're not gonna be able to get right here, you might. Um, you might even sew on this a little bit and you can just unpick those stitches. Just don't let the blade touch that area there. Remember, your blade is what you're worried about. Um, so you're just gonna get as close as possible. Say you go on right here, right? That's okay because all of that's gonna get covered up um, and it's the seam allowance for this is right up to this that little dot. I could actually make that a little deeper. It's basically your 5 8 inch seam allowance, right? So you can kind of get going on there and then just either zigzag or surge it, okay? So you only need to do the left front. You can do both if you want, but you only need the left front. You're gonna cut that off, so don't put yourself through there. So through that, <laughs> I should say. Okay, right, you know what I'm gonna do also? I'm gonna pull up my um, stream in the control room since it's been, the chat's been crashing on me lately and I don't wanna miss out on things so yeah, yeah okay cool cool last time I was like are you guys still there and you guys had like said 5,000 things all right so you've uh, finished this edge here we'll just draw my surging on there right we've surged that right there and now you're gonna put this right sides together I'm giving you a tutorial right now but honestly um, this is my trial I forgot to notch the top up here so we will pretend like that's it. 
You're gonna put a really big basting stitch. So if you really want the good tutorial, fast forward. Hi, Patty, how's it going? Fast forward to when you see me doing this fly. All right, and so you're gonna do a nice big basting stitch to that point that we just clipped. You're gonna switch back to your regular stitch, back stitch there, and you're gonna continue on with your seam. All right, and you're gonna finish this edge or zigzag it, whatever you wanna do right here. This is me surging it. <laughs> Best surging, right? I <laughs> just cut it off. All right, um, let's see. Uh, base the center front, clip it, top stitch to left front. All right, so now you're gonna press this open. I'm pretty sure, yeah, press this open. Press the seam towards the left front, like this is as if we're wearing them right now, right? That's the left. We can even, if you need to keep this straight, put a sticky note on your pants. I do this in the zipper video to keep, to help keep that you know, that straight, so you don't have to think about it or wonder. Just press all that that way. Keep it that way. And then we're going to uh, top stitch this whole edge right here on the, on the um, left front. All right. I feel like this is one of the things <clears throat> that gives your pants the most professional looking fly is if you do this top stitch right here it is kind of the difference between a lot of other patterns doing flies all right so now we've top stitched that see this is hanging loose that's the top stitch right there all right you like the half surging <laughs> I sometimes just do that so that I don't forget to do that later on. Like I just go through the action of doing something, you know, to kind of seed it in my head a little bit. I was pretty prepared today, but um, I have a lot of things I'm kind of juggling right now. So I just want to make sure I do the best I can for you guys. Okay, so now you're to this piece right here. All right, so you'll see that there's buttonhole markings. Um, each of these in the pattern envelope is only two sizes. They did that so that all of these buttonhole markings wouldn't get too confusing. So just pick the one that's your size, cut it out, interface it, however you're going to interface it, and then um, you're going to fold it wrong sides together, and you're going to finish this edge again. All right, so let's uh, serge it. Meow. All right, so we've surged that shut, and now you're gonna add your buttonholes. So I actually went by this guide right here. Um, it's only, the, the greatest thing about this guide, I never, ever, ever, ever use the guide that comes with your pattern um, for buttonholes because if they're vertical buttonholes, they're, sometimes your buttons are not gonna work for that. So, you know, if, they're, if your buttons are much smaller, or much bigger, the spacing's gonna be altered. So I always use um, my own <laughs> based on my button length. But this one you can use because they are spaced on a horizontal. So this is mine right here, this larger dashed line right here. So I just laid my button on there. I actually, um, in here, I wanna console you a little bit. No one's gonna see these buttonholes because there's a fly over your buttonhole. So see, that's what it's gonna look like. No one's gonna see this, okay? So go for it. All right, so I just took my choco liner, which of course I left over there. We'll pretend like this is my choco liner. And I drew a line parallel to this fold about a quarter of an inch away, like that. So chalk, I did that. Then I um, drew some vertical ones like this. So I can just do this. The choco liner seems to be kind of lingering past a few washes lately. So just do what you want to do. Nancy suggests using the washable Crayola markers and they always wash out. I think I'm gonna pick one of those up. All right, so now we have our vertical lines. Make sure you make these perpendicular to your line. And then I put my button on here and I go like this.
like that. Now, typically if the button is pretty flat like this, um, and if you're using a tack button, I know it's a little bit different of a button, but it's actually gonna be easier because there's clearance between the button and the fabric. There's a shank on it. I'm gonna use these vintage buttons that my friend gave me a long time ago. There's even still dirt on the back of them. And um, I was a little like, okay, do I need to add a little length because they're kinda chunky? You never know. So what I do is I start with one that's exactly the same and then I put my bar tack right here, right above that line. That's what I start with. And then I check it and I see. So, and then if that works and I'm like, okay, all these, that's where I'm gonna start. I'm a, that's where I kind of eyeball it. And so that's how I do my buttonholes. You put them on this and now you have your fly placket. So, oh, you're in Michigan, okay. Karen out here trying to stalk you. No, I'm just teasing. <laughs> my friends give me a lot of uh, grief when I say things like that. <laughs> okay, so now we have our little placket here, right? We've prepped it, it's surged. We've got our beautiful buttonholes on there, right? And now we're going to flip this over. I don't want, I knew that would happen, let's see. And let's see, I think we lay this down like this. Right? Wait, I bet I, I need to look at the picture. I feel like that's the right side. Yeah. So I will say that um, when I did these buttonholes, I did treat it like this was the right side. Here's mine right here. But actually this is the right side. So I'm actually really disappointed. Cause these are much nicer than this. The bobbin always looks like, you know, dookie. So, ah, oh, that's so cool. Go Chippewas. <laughs> so, um, hmm. All right, well, you're learning from my mistake here. I should have probably looked through these instructions yesterday, and I did, but I didn't really catch that. Um, put your buttonholes face up from this side. All right? Womp womp. Because my belly could care less about how good these things look. All right, so... We have our, um, yeah, so we put that on there and then we're going to top stitch it. Yeah, so we're gonna lay this on here. About this fold edge right here, an eighth of an inch away from your seam, not your top stitching, your seam, okay? So lay that on there, line that all up, just like that. And then you're going to do the decorative top stitch that you see on the outside of pants. There is a top stitch template. Uh, generally my placket is usually thick enough that I can feel it through the layers. So I don't really use the template. This one's going to be a little harder to tell, but I think I can feel it because I put my fake serging on there. So we're going to top stitch this down. Dang, I'm bummed my buttonholes will be, um, the wrong side up, you know? See, this is already starting to look like a placket. All right, and you're gonna make sure that when you do this that you have allowed the width of a quarter of an inch parallel two rows of top stitch if you want. If, if you only want one row, that's fine too. I do both, um, just depends on the look you want. There's no right or wrong. So like this one, let's see, I did okay. I could probably slip another row in there, but it's pretty close. That's what I, I usually kind of do one row and then I'm like, hmm, can I get another one in there? Do I want another one in there? You know? All right, so this is what we got right now. 
Do you guys want some more light? I feel like when I get the other fabric on here, it'll be too bright. Okay, top stitch the curve, and now we're going to prep our shield. So I usually serge these two long edges first uh, because I'm streaming, but what you can do, <clears throat> you're gonna sew this close at the bottom. What you can do is wait to do that seam first, then serge this, these two edges together. It's less bulky that way when you just have one layer of serging rather than two. So, all right, so now we have our shield on here. I'm gonna actually keep this pin here so it doesn't fold back or do something fun, funny. And I feel like I missed writing down a step here. I think I have to trim this off, right? Let me, let me look, let me look, let me look. You know, Karen, um, my feel, I feel like the best thing with top stitching is not going slow for me. And maybe it's my machine, but I think, um, I think your biggest asset to doing nice top stitching is trusting yourself and going at a, just an even rate. Even if you go slow, just don't stop. Um, this corner right here or that corner right there. I actually would trim this whole seam, but I'm just kind of doing a little, you know, I'm just trying to get through one and then we'll, when I get to my other pants, cause my pants are probably a little thicker than this and I probably would trim that down. So, all right, so let's see here. Align the, oh yeah, so I trim that. I line the raw edge. Then I remove the basting. That's what I wanted to know. I didn't write down Tissue paper, am I right? Hi, Heather, how's it going? All right, so top just the curve, shield, prep. Um, trim off the one inch. Attach, shield. I'm writing this down for the future when we're gonna do. Remove basting. Top stitch, right front. All right, because I kind of interrupted myself to go live. All right. Oh, well this, it, this corner right here is angled like this. Can you see it in there? And that, yeah, I would definitely trim this. Is that what you mean? I love when you guys talk to each other. All right, so shield prep, trim one inch off. You know, I don't have my little ruler over here. The little clear one I'm always pulling out. So let's just put this um, and allow for the width of my pencil. Don't get clever with doing this kind of thing. Just trust in the instructions because sometimes one eighth of an inch makes a big difference later on. Ask me how I know. <laughs> I am queen of trying to get too clever with myself. All right, so here we go. We're gonna line these two edges up. So now this edge is not finished. If you want to uh, serge that, you could. I probably will. Cause it doesn't get, it doesn't get, um... in fact, I don't need to serge this edge on this piece yet. I would do that at this point. Let's see if that would work. It's our good test, right? All right, so now we have that. That doesn't go all the way over there though. So I want this to go like this. So maybe I need to leave an inch. No, that is an inch. Hmm. Let's see. Yeah, see that's covering up the fly. So let's trim a little bit more off, you know? Let's get rid of this, let's do it. I like doing the sample a little bit proper. So an hour from now when I'm going to do the next, not really an hour, I'm gonna get right into the pants right after this and we're probably gonna do this almost immediately. We're gonna do the pockets and we're gonna do the fly. So it'll be fresh, but it is nice to refer to it and I'll just keep this little sample in with my pattern, you know? 
I'm surprised there's a couple of people from the UK that kind of live near each other. And there's more than one person from Sweden in the chat sometimes, which I just love. And Germany. You know? So how are you guys? <laughs> I haven't even asked you guys. I'm like, okay, we're sewing the Morgan jeans all the way through and I need to do this trial. So I just kind of jumped into it. <laughs> No, I don't think so. I think that would be really nice looking too. Heather, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna do the Morgan jeans from start to finish today, but I've actually never sewn a button fly, so I wanted to just do a little trial first. I'm almost done with this little trial, so I'm just doing a little like button fly placket trial right now. Um, and then um, we'll do the real pants in a second. So let's see, I'm gonna line this up with that edge right there. And look at that, does not leave very much. Hmm. Why is that? I didn't do anything different. Yeah, you know? If I trim off, flip your jeans to the wrong side and trim off one inch off the right fly extension in a straight line along the raw edge of the fly shield to the raw edge of the fly extension. You just trim on the right leg, sew together using three eighths and so finish raw edge of the zigzag or surge stitch. Okay, so you do finish the zerg, the serger. I'm gonna press fly shield flat. Your fly shield, shield seems to be offset from center front by about a quarter of an inch. So does that mean they do this and then pull it over? Like that? Oh, okay. So we were okay. I think that's what you do. All right, so let's put this back on here. Because I thought when I did that, if, when, if I did that, it would show. But see, look, I can do this and then maybe fold it back on itself like that. I'm not really a fan of that. All right, so let's pin this. Hmm. Yeah, I don't think you and I to live close to each other either. Um, I don't remember the eucalyptus tank. I've heard of it, but I can't remember it. Yeah, I think there is someone here from Denmark. Oh. Okay. So now this is the front. We're gonna remove our basting stitch, right? All right, and right now I'm kind of going through this, but I'm also troubleshooting that little spot. You gotta remember too, we added a tummy panel to our pocket, so I gotta make sure I can integrate that whole thing into this. <laughs> That's why you do the pockets before you do this, so that you don't. In many of my videos where I've sewn pants, you guys have been here, I jump right into the zipper fly and do the pockets afterward, and that gets me into trouble, doesn't it? Because <laughs> then I forget, oh yeah, there's that, that uh, pocket stay, and it needs to be secured to under the fly, and now I've already secured the fly down, and there's no place for the stay. So, um... Don't do like Sarah me. I have my door open, so if it ends up becoming too noisy, let me know, you guys, because there's kind of a bit of activity out there. Beverly, how's it going? It's a basic tank with bus starts. Ooh. Hmm. Yeah, that's true. Those sharps are really nice. Uh, when I used to use a home machine only, I would get the Microtech sharps for the top stitching, and it, they are really nice for that. And then you can just save it. For the eucalyptus tank, um, is it like the willow tank, Sydney? That one has a bust start, a side bust start. Yeah, it goes from the side seam, right? Yeah, 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 not the armhole, but yeah. What's your, what, what, um, issues are you having, Sydney? Okay. So now, um, I'm supposed to top stitch. Hmm. 
Yeah, see, okay. I need to take this out. So we'll say we ironed it, right? See, now look, I can't just fold that over because look, I get a little like pleat there. Is that what I'm supposed to have? Just secure fly shield and place top stitch eighth inch away from the seam on the right leg as far down as you can. I mean, I could, you know? Oh, actually, ooh, this is actually very intriguing. So, okay, just so you know, there's like a little, I have a little pleat going right here. What's that? All right, so what I like about this is that this seam now is under the overlap here. You see that? So this is where my basting edge was. That's the center front. So it's still lining up to the center front right there. I offset the seam now by making that little like tuck to get this to line up behind here. I think that actually is a great solution. That is one of my pet peeves about zipper flies is when um, the zipper ends right here at the center front and it can peek out. And I do feel like I liked I can't remember how we sewed the ash jeans, but I remember liking the way we sewed the ash jeans zipper fly, but the zipper shows when I wear it. And with all the gingers, it's like a half inch away, you know? All right, so now you saw I have this going on right here, right? So I, I like reassured you in the beginning, no one's gonna see that, and they aren't. We're not done quite yet. So the last step is now to do an extra Gosh darn it, I unthreaded my needle. And it's like totally frayed. Is to do this last bit of top stitching right here. And they have this extra edge coming up, or a, a row coming up from the rise down there, right? So we're gonna do a parallel row to our already top stitch there. And we're gonna go up past this curve and even if I just go yeah we're just gonna go right up in here so I just did this row right here and then I came over right there and so now it's totally clean finished see that well there's my button fly and then you would sew your buttons on that went pretty good. I'm gonna write a little note in here. I really do have nice writing. <laughs> We're ready. I feel pretty good about that. I don't feel good the fact that I put my buttonholes on the wrong side, so. Okay, it comes with curved hem though, fit issues. Diagonal lines from bust to waist dish. One of the shoulders sits kind of high off my body. I was gonna say it's probably a shoulder issue. Um, they're like this, the, the lines. If you, Oh, oh no, Eliza, in class early. <laughs> what were they thinking? They would love that. <laughs> Bring them along. <laughs> no. All right, so I think this went pretty good. So if I put my pants on, you know, maybe my buttons would be right here. So here's my, let's see if I can find my buttonholes here. So 
there we go. And then this is my basting seam right there. You see that? Okay. We're going to get this right the first time, right? Um, all right. So let's get going. Okay. I'm going to try, um, you know, I started last year trying to follow the way a pattern, the order of operations for the um, patterns. So yeah, we do the pockets, we do the button fly, and then we do our yoke back pockets, just like I would do our rise and then our waistband and our wait, out seams and then waistband. Okay. Let's do it. Okay, so I pre-searched a bunch of stuff yesterday, um, and we're going to do a flat felt inseam. Yep, diagonal like that. Um, have you already finished your armhole um, or your your sides, your armhole and your side seam? Like, are they finished, finished? Because I'm wondering if you need to either make the bust start smaller or um, larger. I think when it's diagonal lines like that, it needs to be a little bit bigger because then it's going to pull up the sides. So that's what I would do, Sydney. Put it on and try and pinch a little bit more where the dart is kind of and pinch the fabric from the lower part, the fabric under the dart, kind of pull it up to the dart line and see if the diagonal lines kind of go away. Um, I know it's going to do something funny to your back because it's in a side seam, but it might give you an idea if that's what's happening. You know, and that's really what we need, right? We just need kind of an idea of like um, which way you need to go. I'm gonna brighten this up a little bit. I think I'm gonna try and upload a video today, which is kind of crazy because I really need to sew oodles of masks, but um, I'm gonna do one on how to print PDF patterns. So many people are pressing the PDF patterns, you know, and um, I think that people could be shy about getting them because it is kind of a bummer in some people's eyes to like print the PDFs, you know. All right, so this is my left front. I have finished the curve here and um, oh, big, big note. If you watched my cutting video and you saw how much I added to my rise, I know it was a lot. I didn't end up, I just added it to the top and I didn't adjust this. I have since um, kind of looked into that and decided that that needed to be raised up. So actually the curve was way down here of my fly because I, you know, they was, the pants should have ended like right here. So trace this fly. It's kind of a shame they don't mention this um, because the lengthen and shorten line goes right through the fly. And maybe it's there somewhere and I just missed it. But you need to raise this line up. And so I discovered this afterward because I was like, that's too long. <laughs> I knew that. I had it in the back of my head, but I didn't trust it. So I had to research this part right here. So there's my little slit right there. And I actually already finished this curved edge. I find that to be really helpful especially doing videos. And so, oh, that's funny. I started at the wrong notch right there to finish that curve. So I may go back and surge it. I have the serger set up for us today. All right, so we have, we have our fly on the left front surged. We have our curve surge and I've even trimmed a little off already. And now we're gonna line this up at the top here find our center front notch which is right there it's a very lightweight linen cotton it's not really a canvas um and then we're gonna put our basting stitch on wait we're doing pockets first pockets sorry pockets see i get too er er eager about those <laughs> that's good oh is it knit as well did you say it was knit sorry my glasses keep slipping off all right, there's my, this is my pocket stay that we're going to do. All right, so I take that back. We're going to do the pockets. That's the order of operations. All right, so I'm going to put my 
I have surged um, the curved edge of the pocket facing here. And I surged the side seams of my pocket bags. I'm going to do a French seam on the bottom of that. So you're going to take one here and you're going to line this up, up to that hip. You're going to line this one up to this hip. We were playing fabric chicken, so I have a lot of fabrics going on in this one. <laughs> All right, so line this up. Oh, I forgot to do the side seam there. Whoops. You can um, have a basting stitch on. You can turn this edge under like this and top stitch it down. It's just a little bulkier and that's it. Top stitch this down. If you zigzag this, you can do it right on top of your zigzag. I am lift my presser foot up as I go. Um, and the way I just did this um, accidentally is that the right side of the pocket bag fabric is going to be on the inside of my pants. And you know me, I'm going to take that out. Because I, I really like it to show on the inside of my pants. No one sees them but me, but I like it. So we're off to a great start. <laughs> so let's see. I did backstitch, so there's one plus. <laughs> Here's the um, basting stitch. Pull that one out first. I like my pocket bag fabric to face, like as it, when my pants are inside out, I can see it. So that's what I'm doing here. That's all I'm switching. If you don't want, if you, you can do it however you want. You can just fix, you can start correctly. Unless you want it like that. My hands don't care what the inside of my pockets look like, you know. <laughs> my sister was stationed in North Chicago, like her husband was, you know. So I actually got to go there. I, went, I vended at Stitches uh, Midwest for the only time because she was there. And I was like, oh, this is such a great excuse. I can go see her and uh, be a vendor at Stitches Midwest. It was fun. I had brought my daughter. So she stayed with my sister for a few days. And then they brought her down to me. And then that was the only time my daughter ever came to one of my shows and worked in my booth. And she was such a champ, you know, like... She just wanted to buy things from the other vendors for me. <laughs> so like the last few hours, I'm like, all right, I need some blocking wire so you can go get those. She's like, I don't know what that is, but okay, I'll go find them. And she would go find them. Okay, so here I am. I'm putting them on the wrong side of my fabric. And now I'm going to top stitch them down. This fabric's going to be kind of a pain to sew. I can already tell. It's getting a little, like, loosey-goosey. It's probably going to stretch out when I sew it. I mean, uh, wear them. But I think that'll be okay because these are a little bit on the slim side to allow for non-stretched denims getting kind of stretched out over the time of day. Yeah, it, it is. Louise, hello. Uh, isn't Fort Army? He's Navy. It's the only like land base I think they have. All right, where's my pants? How's it going, Louise? Yeah, I don't know if they still have Stitches Midwest or the Vogue Chicago. What's that Vogue called? All right, I always have to like, you know, lay this out so I do it correctly. It's this one. So this is my right side because it's the inside of my pocket. I'm going to attach this here. And I'm pretty sure this is 5 8 inch seam allowance even on these pocket edges, which seems gigantic right now. Doesn't it? They don't say. No, Louise, you have not. I did a trial, but that's it. So that's next. 
The trial was actually kind of fun. I learned a few things. Oh, there's a place called Vogue Fabrics. Oh, no, that um, Vogue Knitting Live used to have a show in Chicago. Now I think they kind of move it around a little bit. I'm gonna clip this curve. You always gotta clip the curves that are like this. Not the exterior curves, but the interior curves. Well, you might have to do the exterior ones. Let's do our other one. Are you making these, Louise? I didn't remember that. I know Eliza has these and she's kind of bummed. She has to teach a Zoom class right now. <laughs> I always think that sounds like when someone has to teach a class on Zoom, it always sounds like an exercise class to me. You know? <laughs> I sold to a couple of um, yarn stores as chicken boots. Uh, one was, what was her name? Was it Mi Mia or something like that? And then, um, God, it's been a few years. I did some custom stuff for one of them. And then I ended up meeting her at a knitting retreat. Oh yeah, I met her at a knitting retreat and I actually really loved one of the fabrics she had picked and I'd said something and one of her customers, get this, so I made these custom needle cases for her and fabrics that she bought and sent me. I would do that sometimes for some of the yarn stores. Uh, it was a, a affordable way for them to do wholesale with me and, and for me as well. And so she sent me, um, let's, let's press this. She sent me the fabric and then um, my irons. Okay, yeah, just making sure the camera's still there. She sent me the fabric and it was this really cute Japanese like cat fabric and I just loved it and I said something how much I liked it and that at the knitting retreat I delivered half of her order to her so she could give them to some of her customers that came with her and um, one of her customers bought one of my custom accordions from her and then gave it to me so I kind of got paid twice for it and she would not let me not do that and I still use that accordion. It's so cute. <laughs> it was a very nice gift, by the way. Those things weren't cheap, you know? All right, so I'm just gonna press this curve. And then we're gonna do the French seam on the bottom there. And see, now my pocket bag is gonna show on the inside of my I feel like I could press that better, huh? So this, when I do things like this, when it's a contrast fabric, I kind of, I don't know if you can see, I kind of make sure that a little bit of the outer fabric is showing a little bit. We have all kinds of fabrics going. I, I'm really, uh, I'm running out of fabric, you guys. <laughs> I'm not really, but you know. For what I have to sew, matched with what I have pattern-wise, it's getting a little bit slim. Okay, so now I'm gonna top stitch that curved edge. Pie is really in my way today. It just needs to move. There we go. All right. Didn't iron that very accurately right there. See, like curves like this, my presser foot wants to stay right where I placed it. So it actually is, is pretty darn accurate. Um, 
and I do have pretty significant pressure on the presser foot right there. So, <laughs> I know, right, Karen? I mean, I understand like the logic behind both ways, but it is how I actually um, identify each pair of my gingers is by their their pocket fabric like which version i have like okay that's the oldest pair so i know that that one fits like this and that's the newest pair i can tell by the pocket fabric all right so this is my um winning side so if this is my right side i'm going to do wrong sides together i know i know it looks like my right side of my fabric Rid of some of these little threads here this kind of french seam i mean if you're not that accurate it's not as critical because no one's gonna see this one in fact i'm just gonna finger press it you know right here see but now this is my finished edge that'll show on the inside of the bit of the pants Now we have, can you tell how lightweight this is? Um, I don't have any store bought jeans. I don't really say that very much. I have actually one pair of Oil Lily uh, knickers, but they're Oil Lily and that's one of my favorite all time brands when they were around. All right, so I always get a little bit of this messy knot and lining up junk. Blame it on my cutting or my sewing, I don't know. So I just top stitched that down. So one thing I almost forgot is our pocket stay, which is right, it was right here, remember that? Here it is. Okay, so what's my plan with the pocket stay? I, I gotta like figure that out right now. So I surged two sides, the side that I think will be exposed in the side of, in the pants. And then this edge goes to the center front. So now I could just edge stitch this down so that, um, this is what I want. I could just edge stitch this down like this and lose a fraction of my pocket or I could have done it when it was before I folded it just like that so I'm going to line it up with the surged edge and see so there's my center seam right there so I'm just going to leave this loose and this is kind of my own uh, style of pocket stay because I don't want two layers of fabric the only thing I wear is store bought for the most part is underwear and bras and socks. But I have a lot of hand knit socks. Admittedly, mostly people gave them to me. I love knitting socks, but I don't need to wear socks very much where I live. Um, I have a few, definitely have a few t-shirts. Like people give me t-shirts, especially Harry Potter ones, or um, I've bought a few um, from Patchwork Threads that say like, so cool, S-E-W. Cool, you know, I have a few of those or the ones with quilt um, blocks on them because even though I'm not a quilter really, I, I like the way those look. And they're sewing related and I'm supporting them. But um, for the most part, yeah, I don't wear any store bought anymore. Okay, so there's my pockets, or yeah, pocket stay, aka tummy panel. But I think you could do it out of knit like we were talking about. Um, granted, I don't think you should. I mean, I think, you know, you want that little stay there. You don't want it to stretch, right? So I added a little extra. I kind of canted that because I didn't 
have a need to do a French seam for that, so I'm just going to even that up. So I'm going to decide how to secure this to the fly when I get there. Can you see some of the ink from wearing, uh, washing jeans on my fabric? This little fabric got a little bit mishandled. I'm just going to secure that at the top there. All right, so when we have one, let's do all that again. So the other way I could handle this pocket stay is to find this little seam here. Like this. I actually need to do the French seam though still. I could um, stitch it on there, but I think really the simplest thing is to do just what I just did, you know? All right, so this is, I'm gonna put this wrong sides together. My uh, raincoat is store-bought. I did, I just barely overlapped those two edges. I'm about to do it again. I have a couple of raincoats that I made when I worked at Kokatat, but they are now like so old they've delaminated. <laughs> I have them, it's like one of the only things, I'm not someone who hangs on to things, and I'm not very sentimental, but I know it would be dumb if I, I let some of that record go. And I've let so much of my work just get donated or go. I just am not very sentimental and I don't really have that kind of, that's not, that's not where my ego is, you know what I mean? So I just don't really hang on to it. And, and it has bitten me in the butt. Yeah, so I actually am just hiding my surged edge. So you can see my surged edge there. I'm just hiding it. I'm lining it up down there at the bottom. I kind of get rid of some of these little wingy threads there. You know, that's my pet peeve. And then I just edge stitched it on. Yeah. It's the flattest way to do it. Anytime you're going to create a seam and have it fold back on itself, you're going to create more bulk, right? And we're trying to reduce the bulk where our stomach is. So try and think ahead like that. You can... This is one of those spots where it's really easy to get too clever and to be like, oh, I know a better way I can clean finish this, or oh, I know a better way I can um, add this step and it'll look a certain way. That's totally awesome and you can do that. Just remember the whole point of this in our case was to reduce the bulk and kind of smooth out the tummy area. And yeah, I'm just edge stitching it along the fold there and covering up my surged edge, just like that. And so I think another thing you can consider, but um, I would kind of experiment with it first, <clears throat> is pulling that panel, depending on what kind of fabric you have, pulling it um, so that it actually is a little bit shorter than your front. So it actually is kind of keeping, like this is you and here's your pants. So it would pull your body away from your pants, theoretically. You know what I mean? So you need to do some, um, definitely do some experimenting with that. You wouldn't want to get any weird pulling and you really don't want to have, don't, don't, I'm, I'm exaggerating it. But if you made this shorter than your center front seam there and it kind of pulled, you know, like that, you have this little bit of a gap there, you would then essentially be kind of adding a girdle into your pants. <laughs> so it's an idea. You'd have to secure this edge down to your center front somewhere. Um, it just means that um, you're probably going to have to do it at an angle as well. So keep your edges lined up there and just kind of add it a little bit down here. It's an idea. You know? Alright, so I'm going to trim that top edge since I didn't use a French seam down here. I used the serger. 
And if you didn't see the cutting video, that's where I kind of drafted that at the end, the very end of the video. We were like, oh yeah, the tummy panel. <laughs> okay, so now we have our pocket. And yeah, you can see that that's the wrong side of the fabric in there, but no one will know because I made sure that the edge doesn't show. But on the inside, you know, you see my fabric. It's kind of cute. So now it's time for the fly, finally. Um, it is one piece. I just made this little piece of fabric. It was one layer. I found, so if you ever make the Ginger Jeans, which is the same company, they they have a pocket stay built into this pocket. And that, so this pocket, both layers go all the way to the center front. So you can do that. You can do that. You can actually take this pattern piece in the Morgan Jeans and um, extend it all the way to the center front. You can cut it apart so that it's not folded right there, but it doesn't really matter. I mean, if that's not weird to you, you can just keep it folded. My issue with that is that um, it adds an extra layer of fabric there, and some of the way you have to sew it creates a little bit of bulk, and also some of it at one point is actually loose, like a, like a little bit is loose inside there, and I feel like that that's just a potential for some wrinkles to happen in a layer that you can't really access and iron. So what I did, I think I did it a lot better on the Ash Jeans, was create a single layer of fabric. And I think what I did is one of these is all the way to here. One of these pocket pieces goes all the way to here. And then the other one stops here. And I think I sewed it right sides together, folded it back on itself, and that's how I dealt with it. So, and I just kept it one layer of fabric. You know, interfacing this fabric would probably be, be a good idea because it, it's pretty loose. I mean, I don't know if you can see how loosely woven that is. So, I don't know how much of a tummy panel, panel I'm going to get out of this. Better than nothing, I guess. And maybe some of you don't even need that, you know? So you can just skip that. They call it a pocket stay. All right. So, this is my left front. This is my right front. And <laughs> I forgot to, um, so I'm just going to surge that right now. Let's see if I can get the serger's camera going here. I'm going to have to tilt it a little bit. Kind of a makeshift way to do my serger, but hey, it allows it. I have to kind of lean over. I accidentally had started from this original clip and that's why I didn't realize it. So you're going to see me. I'm going to pull this all the way back and I'm going to let my serger foot go over this, but I'm not going to touch it. Not with a knife. I'm going to go all the way down. I might as well. Right? <laughs> you know what's really funny is um, I, I'm i not really on Facebook. Like I have the sewing thing, which today I promise I'm going to check. Um, I have the Sew so Live Facebook thing. But I did get connected a few years ago with someone I worked with at like a sporting goods store right when I, like, right when I moved out of my parents' house and I was going to college and I was like 18. And, um, and he's actually doing some really cool stuff. He works, he lives in Washington, D.C. and, and works, um, uh, I had seen him put photograph with some pretty cool people. And um, he was wearing some like Madras plaid shorts the other day. And I was like, I have never commented or really said, I said hi once, you know, a few years ago. I don't really say anything. I don't even know if he knows I'm so-so now because I've changed from chicken boots and, they, and I, I got rid of my Facebook. But anyway, I commented. I was like, have you had those shorts since I met you? Because <laughs> they looked straight out of the 80s. And he was like, oh my gosh, hey, how's it going? You know, whatever. 
And then he, you guys, he asked me, do you still love ice cream? I guess I loved ice cream back then. <laughs> so I was like, I was like, yeah, I still love ice cream. And I can't believe you know me for that because I don't remember ever going for ice cream back then. I didn't have the money for it. And where would I have gone? I don't even remember where I went. It was kind of funny. I was like, oh man, I'm consistent. I wasn't out at bars. He's the only time I ever went to like a rave type of thing was with him, which was really funny. Okay. Let's do it. Here's our sample button fly we just sewed. Turned out pretty darn good. I'm gonna get a drink of water here. <laughs> Oh, that's right. I made a bunch of buttercream frosting on Easter. We need to use that. I made a chocolate cake, a black mocha chocolate cake with buttercream frosting. Turned out pretty good. And I, to I had toasted almonds for the top of it with the frosting. <laughs> All right. So here we are. We're at the zipper fly part of the stream. I'm going to try and keep my head on straight because sometimes when I've done one, I get a little bit loosey goosey. And I know you probably fast forwarded it from the video to see this. So you need to, um, sorry, mine looks a little messy. You can watch the videos to find out why, but, uh, you're going to surge your left front. It's as if you're wearing the pants. That's the left you want. You're going to surge this curve here and then you're going, I already surged my lower parts as well. Um, and I've already clipped to the circle. So on your pattern piece, there's a, a circle and you're going to clip to it. Mine looks shallower and that's because I've already trimmed off a little bit of the seam allowance, but you, you typically have a 5 8 inch seam allowance and I've trimmed it down to 3 8 all right? So mine looks shallower. You're going to clip to that notch. Don't be shy about it. Just do it. Make sure you've marked the center notch right here, this fold line on the top of your pants as well. And you've already sewn your pockets. So you're, now you're going to put your pants right sides together. And see, this is the part I'm talking about with the stay, you guys. So if I sew this right now with that seam, my problem is that look at all this extra fabric. So here's my center front seam. Sorry, pocket fly people. Just let's talk about this for a second. So when this gets folded back, right? Because this is the seam line right here. Right here, you have now this much fabric. And that is to me kind of a deal breaker. That's kind of extra, right? So I think... I'm going to try just trimming off a little bit of this seam allowance and try and get that right on the fold line of the center front instead. Now the, and I am hoping that when I go to top stitch this, I'm going to catch that stay in there because I don't really want it to fall away. All right. This is just my two cents. My engineer kind of brain kind of kicks in with this kind of stuff and I could really overthink it. Or just think about it a lot and we could do a whole dedicated thing to it, but we're not here for that right now. So like this looks like it goes to the fold line, but not down here. And that's just probably some inaccuracies, cutting and sewing over the course of it. So I'm going to trim this to that seam line again, like that. So again, I'm just trimming this to meet up with the center front. All right, back on track now. All right, we're gonna put your uh, machine to a very long, easy to remove basting stitch. Line up your center notch at the top here. <laughs> See how far off I was just now? <laughs> I was like, wow, I'm really far off. Okay, line it all the way. And you're gonna sew your basting stitch along your center front line. This is an added piece. We add it as a pocket stay or tummy panel. If you fast forwarded to the, you don't understand what this is. Yours doesn't look like that. Don't worry about it. All right. Um, and you're going to sew to that, uh, dot that we clipped to already. And the reason I clipped to it is because I find surging this edge with that already clipped a lot easier. Um, and watch the beginning of the video to see how I did that. Um, and then you're going to switch to your regular stitch length, back stitch there, and continue all the way down to the rest of your rise. All right, so here we go. Basting stitch right now. Keep all this lined up. You really want to make sure you don't, 
if you've already clipped it and I find it easier if you already clipped it we want to make sure that that clip on this layer here isn't like sneaking that way a little bit you know get it all lined up now we got to the clip and now I'm going to put it back down to a regular stitch length back stitch and continue on my serger is really tight right here um, it's nice on this edge but a little tight there not very pretty all right so now we're going to open it up like this so now I can really see that center front seam okay open it up press it and then you're gonna press press this open but with the seam this seam right here is gonna go to the left front now this is I'm holding the pants as if I'm wearing them right now right this is the left side this is the right side so just press that that way and that's how you're gonna top stitch the center front so keep it like that when you flip it over so now we're looking at it this way so this is still pressed open right maybe we should iron that I think that would be a good idea and then this seam is gonna be pressed on the rise here, it's going to be pressed this way. So let's iron that real quick. We're going to make sure. Let go. I could probably trim that little pocket stay a little better, huh? But I think it's going to be fine. I didn't really engineer that pattern piece for the Morgan jeans because I'd never sewn them, so it's an experiment. Oops, sorry. Forgot we <laughs> moved the camera for the serger earlier. There we go. All right, so it's all pressed. Press that right seam towards the left side. This next step that we're gonna do with the top stitching, I really feel makes your fly look the most professional. A lot of fly tutorials skip it. It's not my added thing. This is actually in the instructions. So I'm not like trying to toot my own horn or anything. I just really do think that this is what makes a fly look pretty polished. I have one pair of jeans I forgot to do it on and I always notice it. I bet every time I go to the iron, you guys worry I'm not going to click the camera now. I've scarred you. <laughs> I kind of got that all off here. So let's, because uh, I'm dealing with this pocket state, we'll just pin it in a few places here. Kind of away from the fray. So now we have it. All right, so now we're on the right side of the pants and we're gonna top stitch on the left front, this one here, <clears throat> to the right of the seam. Just top stitch down, make sure you still have your regular stitch length going. This is the kind of the drag, if you're doing denim and you're kind of switching back and forth between the, that nice top stitch thread and um, you know your regular interior thread I know it's kind of a pain yeah I know it is kind of hot jam it looks better in person <laughs> but yeah it does look a little wild especially on the camera so go all the way down you're gonna put another row in later so don't do that yet all right so now you have your top stitch to the right of the seam there okay Okay, now, that was painful. Okay, now you're going to get your fly shield out and your button fly. All right, here's my big tip. <laughs> you have to put in your buttonholes before you attach your fly placket to your jeans. You can't get away from it, all right? Um, so, this is something I learned today that I thought the button holes go on this side facing up. So 
first of all, you're going to take this pattern piece, interface it, fold it wrong sides together, and then you're going to finish this edge. I used the serger. Now I'm going to, I'm going to like, um, secure my little serger ends there and get rid of these little threads. My serger looked really bad on this piece. I don't know why I continued to use it for the buttonholes. It's just one of those things where it's getting late in the day. So, and I had to do these buttonholes at home because my home machine's there. So, <laughs> hello, Marilyn Seamstress. Nice. Aw, Heather. <laughs> That's so nice. <laughs> I know. I really love having streams on in the background or an audiobook. It is nice. You know? I love that you guys are sewing with me, even if it's not the same thing. It's not a sew along, right? <laughs> Oh, nice, Jan. Yeah, I'm kind of getting to that point, too. I have um, 200 and, 267 over there. Hello, Dorothy. Hello. How's it going? <laughs> okay, so like I said, so now when it comes to this is the next step, you're going to take this piece. Remember, you're going to interface it. I just put in some poplin there. I didn't um, use fusible. You can do whatever you want. Uh, wrong sides together. Finish this edge now. When I marked my buttonholes, here's the pattern piece. I did the 14. I just chalked directly on here and my chalk is a little unforgiving these days. So I um, consoled myself with the fact that there is a, a placket over your button fly placket. And so no one's gonna see this, right? Oh, cool, Karen. You made about 300. Oh my God, Jan, you're way above me. Whew. <laughs> okay. So, um, I did a parallel line a quarter of an inch away from this folded edge right here. Okay. Now this is my big tip. Don't sew it with the buttonholes right side up on this one. So see, this is the curve going like this, this way. You need to do it this way because um, my buttonholes are actually going to be the wrong side up on my thing. I don't know why I, it's because look, this is why this pattern piece is marked incorrectly. I'm just going to call it out right here. And now the buttonholes are marked on this side, but this is not the um, right side up. See, this is the right side up right here. Okay. So put your buttonholes on this side, right side up. All right. So you're going to draw a line a quarter of an inch parallel to the fold here. Mark your buttonholes. I actually do use these as the buttonhole guide because um, they're perpendicular to the center rather than them being parallel to the center. Your button size isn't going to make a difference for the spacing. I mean, unless they're crazy, but if you're using like tack buttons, you're fine using this template. It's, I rarely use these templates, but this one would be great. So find your size button, your, your size, like meaning your, the size you cut out of your jeans, like find that dotted line. So mine is this one, this one, this one, and this one. I drew my quarter of inch parallel line here. I drew perpendicular lines lining up with this. And then I laid my button right on top of that. I drew a line on my paper at each one where the button ended. And then I did a sample buttonhole and I put my bar tack just above that because my button isn't that thick. If your button's kind of thick, you might want to allow, make your buttonhole a little bit longer and test one out. All right. So now you have the buttonholes in your fly placket. That's what that calls, right? That's what that's called, right? <laughs> that sounded really funny just now. Okay, and so now we're ready to proceed. And you can see these are the wrong side of my buttonholes. That's my face. If I could make an emoji face, it would be that little straight one. Okay, so you're gonna lay your placket, your beautiful buttonhole placket, even if they're not beautiful, it won't matter. Nobody's going to see these and no one's going to see it uh, to the world. Cause look, there's a cover right over it. Okay. Okay. Oh my gosh. You guys are talking a lot. Oh, you're making the page dress by Elba. I want to make that bucket hat they have. Oh, oh, you had to do all the text before you cut it out. That's pretty cool. 
Call it out. Yeah, Jen, right? <laughs> oh, you did, you did you make? Which ones by Itch to Stitch did you make? We made the Mountain View pull-ons. They were great. We're going to do the, we're going to do bras this year too. Max. <laughs> nice, Dawn. That's a lot. Oh, thanks, Jan. I know. I told everyone I'm wearing it out of the house so the dogs don't affiliate walks with it. So that's my excuse, but I love wearing it. Okay, so now you're going to lay your button placket here and you're going to take this folded edge and move it about an eighth of an inch away from the seam. Not the stitching that you just stitched, but the seam. Or just line it up along that other surging there. Okay, I'm going to kind of pin it down a little bit just away from this edge here because we're about to top stitch it right onto. This is my last two pieces of elastics for a mask, so I'm like hoarding them. <laughs> Yeah, Louise, I've been lack in doing that. I'm definitely going to do bras this year, though. So, the newest one, Dawn. How'd they turn out? Those things were cute. Okay. Make I'm, I've got, like, a really badly <laughs> penmanship um, notes here. I'm just making sure. It's my first time doing a button flip packet. I did a sample earlier. All right, so now if you have the top stitch template, now's a great time to pull it out and you can lay it on here. But I'm going to feel mine. I can really feel all that thickness there. What is this? Okay, this pin needs to go. I have a couple extra pins in here now we do not want. So now, you guys, let's talk about um, our tummy panel thing, right? So I'm about to stitch this down, and here's where the tummy panel is. Look how close to the pocket it is. It is an extra layer of fabric in there. All right, so I think if you want two rows of parallel curve stitching, the best idea to do is to do the outer one first. Doing the inner one um, doesn't give you much leeway to make sure you're going to be able to catch that perimeter edge of your curve. So try and do the, the outer one first. I'm going to feel for it. Just going to look at everything here. I can see, like you can see that ridge. It's pretty obvious. It's pretty thick. And the top stitch template might not line up, so I just go by what's in front of me. Feeling that curve. Walk your machine around if you need to, like lift up your presser foot and back stitch. And then do it again. I got a little bit out there, right there. Not so good now, am I, Karen? <laughs> I find going around curves, I know it's kind of scary to, um, when you go around those curves, that you want to stop and adjust, but I get the smoothest curve if I can continue to go around, like not stop sewing. That's my tip, so. Oh, awesome, Heather, uh, Sherry, that's awesome. I'm glad you like it. Oh, wow, Heather, aw, your grandmother. Hi, Andy, it's been a long time. How are you doing? It's good to see you. That's awesome, Don. You make everything, Don. Nancy, how's it going? <laughs> Okay, so now we have, let's see how I did. Looks like I ca caught it in there. All right. So we've got our, mine's narrower up at the top and wider here. Whoops. <laughs> okay, so now we are top stitch the curve. Now we're gonna prep our shield. So uh, I didn't need to pre-surge this uh, because there is a step where we get the opportunity to surge this to the pant. So you don't need to pre-surge this. Learn from me. So you're gonna put this right sides together. It looks like my angle down here is a little off. And then you're gonna sew um, seam down at the bottom, short edge right there. And then I'm gonna trim it. Turn it right side out. And if you wanna press that, go for it. Get a nice crisp edge there. Yeah, I'm me too, Nancy. 
Yeah, in fact, I have an extra pattern because I accidentally bought two when I went to buy it. So I'll probably get, do a, like a giveaway or something. Oh, Nan Andy, yeah, right? Yeah, I know. Are you, what are you, what's keeping you busy with it? Are you Are you in the medical industry? I don't want to worry about you guys, but you know, I'm really thankful for those folks. Aw, oh, her nurse comes for us. So cute. Okay, so you have your shield. It's prepped, right? And now we are going to go to the inside of our pants here. And we're going to trim off this flappy edge here one inch. So I'm just going to lay my ruler on here. I mean, look at my fly is not cut that great or some, maybe I didn't sew well. It is a little narrower and wider down here. So maybe that's why my top stitching look like that. All right, so just using a soft pencil, cut that inch off very awkwardly right here. Eh. Okay. Now this is the thing I learned today is how this lines up. So you're gonna lay this on here. I feel like this is higher. All this is higher for some reason. Oh, but that's down, okay, that's good. Okay, so we're gonna go by the pants. Line this up here with that raw edge, the shield. Now see how this doesn't line up with this over here? That's gonna fix itself because this actually gets pushed that way. That's what I learned today. So, it's not denim, it's just like a linen cotton, I wanna say canvas, but it's not that canvasy. It's pretty open weave. Oh, that's right, you're a nurse. Oh, thanks for all the work you're doing. Hang in there, oh, man. Yeah, do you work for NHS? Wow. Uh, all right, I know there's people trying to tune, tune in just for this part, so let me keep going here. So now we're gonna stitch the shield to that raw edge. Now, if you haven't finished this edge, that's okay. We, you're gonna get to do that soon. All right, so now you see, oh, I missed it. Maybe it'd be a good idea to go from uh, this side so that you don't miss it like I just did. I'm gonna take out a few stitches so I can line that up good. That did feel a little weird. I should have, you know, trusted my instincts. Sometimes the thicker thicknesses really uh, overrule these flimsier ones, you know? trying to grab one stitch not the weaving of the fabric that's how open weave this is do your uh, Morgans get kind of relaxed over the day Nancy did you use non-stretch denim right all right so line this up that edge there like that I wasn't top back stitching its top because it's gonna get in a waistband oh okay oh my gosh Andy yeah, I know. I actually feel like I'd be really good at that. Yeah, you are one of the heroes, Andy. <laughs> okay. So now we have um, our fly shield here. I'm looking at my notes here. Turn when attach the shield, remove the basting stitch. So now we still have this loose edge here. See, look at that. So this is something I didn't consider. I should not have trimmed off the seam allowance on this side, you guys. Look, it's not going to make it. It's never going to get secured. <laughs> oh, me and these pocket stays just don't get along. So now I have this flappy piece of fabric sitting here. <laughs> well, crap. Okay. I'll probably just remove it on this side. I'll have a lopsided tummy. <laughs> Okay, so now we're gonna remove the basting stitch. Can, I think I can remove these pins now. Yeah, you know, Nancy, I did do my buttonholes first and I'm pretty disappointed that the buttonholes are marked on the wrong side of the pattern piece. So the nice side of my buttonholes is gonna face my body. So that, that's kind of disappointing.
But you guys can all learn from me. I'll take one for the team for you guys. They are not club jeans. <laughs> that sounds like my kind of jean then. I think that's kind of why I went with the cuffed look. I kind of figured they'd get kind of slouchy in a nice way. Has Christy made these? You guys know Christy. Jeans, Andy. <laughs> uh, did I ever veer off the directions again? Well, I mean, is it really veering off? <laughs> we added a pocket stay at the last second of the cutting stream and, um, I've never sewn a button fly, so admittedly, <laughs> you know. Okay, so that's my center. Oh, look at that. I didn't really cover up my serging there. So I actually might want to cover that up. I'm going to sew that a little nicer. I'm going to sew it to the left of my serging since I already have it on there. And if you need to still finish this fly shield to the center front edge, now is the time to either zigzag it or serge it, whatever you're going to do. And you can just run it through. There would be no risk of hurting your pants. All right. Okay. So now here we go. We have just taken out our basting stitch. Get rid of all these threads. They're really hard to grab later on, so get rid of them now. See the little loops poking out? Get rid of that guy. Don't leave it in there. You don't want to have to fuss with this on denim. Denim is very unforgiving if you snag it with your seam ripper. Because there's white threads woven in there, you know? Oh, wow, Heather. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> Karen. Really, Louise? That's hilarious. <laughs> I am Norwegian descent, if you couldn't tell. <laughs> okay, uh, remove the base, and now we're going to top stitch. Oh, I got a little bit more surging. I still have surging showing. What the heck? Sorry, I'm going to get rid of that. I really don't want that to show. Don't do your surging first, that's for sure. All right, and then we top stitch this edge right here. So now this is the edge right here that we removed the basting stitch from. That's your center front. This still lines up to that, okay? But this little seam is gonna be to the right of your center front as you're facing the pants. So we're gonna top stitch this down. like that and now we're gonna do the last thing so make sure you line up your pants to the center front the original basting line just like that see how they look on the inside that's what they're looking like right now got my uh, weird thing there I gotta deal with but see this is now covering up the entire button fly placket okay I am crazy about these threads it's the difference <laughs> so they still make what? Oh, the 501 relaxed fit. Yeah, right. Yeah, I saw that. Okay, so now we have this. Make sure these threads don't. See, look at There was one more. That's what you'll end up with. So look at it on the back side here. Let's get rid of these threads here. And don't worry, like I'm gonna get rid of this like slit here. That's what we're about to do. I'm just looking for any of these basting threads to pull to the back side here and get rid of. Because they're really hard to remove, especially in denim. You guys, are, it's really easy to, to like think it's easy using the fabric I'm using right now because it's hiding everything. But um, denim would be a totally different story. And those folks right now are frustrated because they're flipping back and forth between top stitching thread. <laughs> OK, 
Okay, so now keep this nice and lined up. Like, did you see I just had to pull that up? You don't want a little pucker right here. See that? So pull this nice and tight, line up this edge to the basting stitch where it was originally. I would pin this all down right now. You don't want this to shift. This is kind of an important area. And I, I talk about this occasionally because there's something about when you sew anything, in, not incorrectly, but if it's very distinctive, it's almost like, um, say these were a, a white denim and I was top stitching these all in black and then I had one weird little bobble. The eye goes right to it when someone's looking at it and you don't really want people like looking right there, right? <laughs> so that's why I always say, just kind of pay attention to this area because there's kind of no going back. And like I said, seam ripping denim is it's not very forgiving. You accidentally um, catch those twill threads and you get a snag in your denim, especially when you do stretch denim. Thankfully, this isn't stretch denim. All right, so now you're going to put in your second row of top stitching along the rise here. And we're gonna come up past where we already stitched our curved stitching here and we're gonna secure all this. So maybe make a note, where is that spot, right? That spot is right here. You know, it's, it's actually kind of down there a bit right here. And this is when we're gonna secure all this so that this doesn't flop open and you see all that down there, right? So let's get this nice and lined up. pretty thick. I'm not going to lie. Look at that. I just bent my pen. So denim is definitely going to be a bit of a struggle for some folks. All right. So then you put your other row of top stitching there, whatever width you're going for. Just keep it parallel to your original one. You're going to, you're not worried about hitting any zipper or, um, zipper tape, your buttonholes. Let's see, where's my buttonhole? My buttonhole is way up here. We're totally fine. So we're going to come up a little bit. I'm going to go up about a half inch above that stitching. Turn to the center front and back stitch. So just kind of experiment with what you want as far as how you want the look to go. Um, this is what I just did right here, this line. And then I came over to the center front. See that? And we're done. Just like that. <laughs> so you can see there's my right side of my buttonholes the wrong side's facing out so that makes me a little bit triggered <laughs> a little upset about that all right so now this is my button fly here you go the buttons are going to go on the fly shield here and i think the only thing i'm going to do um with the fly here is i'm going to secure the fly shield so that it's not flapping around out here by putting a kind of a fake bar tack right about here. So I'm just going to line all this up again. And I don't usually put in real bar tacks and a bar tack is a, it basically it looks like one side of a buttonhole stitch. It's a very dense zigzag stitch. So, so I just usually put something like right here. I go back and forth a few times. All my jeans have it. It looks fine. And now my fly shield is secure right there. It looks pretty good. For as thready as this fabric is, it looks pretty good. But now I have the issue of this um, <laughs> tummy stay that I don't need because it's not going to do a darn bit of good. What, Louise? Usually by, you need a hip. <laughs> yeah. Rachel, how's it going? <laughs> mm hmm Consolation is no one knows, but you think, I don't know what that means. <laughs> okay. I'm going to take this out real quick so I can continue on. Bummer. So I think uh, if I had uh, thought ahead or noticed that's what would happen, 
I would just make this, just make it a lot longer. And then you could have, I don't know where you, I, you might be able to just, you know, have done this, you know, lined it up like that and then surged it. <laughs> Yeah, I know, but that just that just kind of makes me mad, you know, like that is uh I what it is is like a lot of people fret about the buttonholes, right? There's people that like it's their first time making something um and or they don't do buttonholes very often, maybe they're really experienced with something like that, right? And then they make this beautiful pair of jeans and then they realize their buttonholes are the backside they're gonna probably think that they did something wrong and that's kind of a bummer I just don't like people feeling that way oh no Karen yeah I actually like the fake bar tack too Nancy that's funny you say that I don't really encourage people to do it I just that's what I do I'm not going to just put that on my home sewing machine I used to, when I did home sewing way before I had any of my businesses and I home sewed on the side for fun, I always had at least three machines and two of them were basic sewing machines, right? They weren't like fancy machines at all, but it really helps to have like more than one uh, machine to for projects like this when you're switching, switching between top stitching or buttonholes, um, you know, and you can just kind of keep that flow going. I don't really have that here. My binding machine, you know, I could take the binding attachment off of it, but it's not really, I don't need to be efficient, too efficient here, you know. Okay, so Tommy panel is gone, but it looks fine now. Okay. All right. Let's do something else besides a button fly. <laughs> oh, no, Andy. See you later. Thanks for all you're doing out there. Stay safe. <laughs> Night, and thanks for popping by. All right. Now it's time for the back. What time is it? God, I feel like I barely did anything, and we've been streaming almost two hours. Holy moly, no wonder I'm hungry. I'm, I'm probably going to make this a two-part stream. I was going to do them so complete, but um, we have a long way to go. Oh, really, Rachel? Yeah, uh, full disclosure, all my buttonholes that you saw there were too long. So I ended up uh, bar tacking over the correct length and picking out the other stitches. They looked beautiful before I did that. But it doesn't matter anyway because we're looking at the back. I'm not going to let that go. <laughs> I know. I'll let it go. I'll let it go maybe. All right. So first off, we're going to hem our back pockets. I think this is actually one of the first steps in the pattern. But... Um, I'm going to do it right before I put, attach the pockets. All right. I'm, I surged mine, but you can do a rolled hem at the top. And you'll notice sometimes when I hem things like this that you're going to see, I do it from the right side. It's not very far to go. It's um, not too hard. And um, then I ensure the nice side is showing. And if you're one of those folks at home, like sewing in, with the top stitch thread, that nice top stitch thread, you, you have to do that, right? So, and just a note, if you are using that top stitch thread on your jeans, I put regular bobbin thread in. So, if you're here going, I wanted tips on that. I have sewn lots of other jeans and you can check those out. I didn't search the top edge, did I? Nope, I always forget one edge. How many times have you sewn with me and I always forget one edge of one of these pieces? So I'm gonna search this real quick. This is my pocket marking though. I need a pin. My, you know, I bought all those pins and it was like the worst thing I could have done for my pin organization here. They're everywhere. I've gotten very irresponsible with them. Just transferring my 
pocket markings right now. So I can pull apart my pants backs. And I'm just going to surge the top edge right here without changing the camera real quick. Woo! Or I'm going to fall. Lots of threads on the floor make it slippery. My serger is so loud. Good night, Louise. Thanks for coming by. Maybe we'll see you tomorrow. Uh, I just searched the hem. Dang it. grab my chair before I sit down because I'm always worried I'm going <laughs> to go, you know, backwards. <laughs> Missed the chair. All right. So now we have our yoke. This is another one that's particularly annoying. Like if you're doing all that top stitching and you have to switch between, it's sometimes good to just stack things up, do a bunch of stuff and then top stitch all of it together. So you kind of got to go out of order of the instructions because of that, you know? Yeah. Oh gosh. There's no, I could not get the top stitch thread to work in my bobbin and I was trying to do something that looked good on both sides. It's the same when you do, um, the buttonhole, same thing. And see, that's another, that's another reason a lot of people will probably use their top stitch thread for those buttonholes. And then what they're you're going to see is their bobbin thread. So yeah, I'm not letting it go. <laughs> All right, five eighths inch seam. So your yoke, the deeper end of the yoke goes to the center back. And um, let's see, does the seam get pressed down in uh, top stitching? Yeah, that's how I do it. But I just all of a sudden was like, I feel like sometimes they do it up. So press your seam down and do whatever top stitching you want. I'm going to do two rows. It's such gigantic seam allowance. You know, the yoke is basically the dart of your pants, the back of your pants. You really can't do without it. Some, some folks can, but you really can't usually. So. Yeah, I agree, Sydney. I have definitely played thread chicken with that thread, though. You know, I feel like you can get almost two pairs of jeans sewn with one of the bigger spools, and that's just enough to make it me nervous sometimes. And especially on my machine here, this thread goes way up and down. So I ended up, I probably some of you remember, I ended up like, um, I had to unthread my whole machine and rethread. I couldn't tie it off and pull it through because I was so worried about losing like a yard of thread every time I switched, you know. Oh, you did, Nancy. And see, I always use like navy blue. I think that's smart to match it if you can because um, that way if your tension gets a little bit off because of that thread weight, you won't notice it as much because you'll if the bobbin thread gets pulled up, it won't be a different color. All right, so now our yoke is done. Um, let's put our pockets on. Sometimes you need to place your pockets. And if you're looking for fun uh, back pocket top stitching uh, guides, I've heard a uh, closet case has a lot of templates on there. All right, so I always start upside down and I'm just gonna center my pocket over where my pins go in because that's the marking. Just like that. Let it relax on there and then I'm gonna pin my pocket in the middle just like this. 
hand and turn it under. Let's see if I can fold this little corner down like that to get it clean finished in there. I've been kind of playing around with that lately. I start at the hemline there, go up to the top, across the top, and then down the side to kind of get that little triangle. It's a high stress spot. I don't know about you guys, but this is me when I'm walking, standing around. I have my hands in my back pocket talking to people. <laughs> so, are, yeah, Sydney, I can't even to look at them. I've only seen a few, but I think they are, I've heard they're really fun. I know Karen was looking for some, and, um, I mean, Karen, I think that you can do the cats in kind of an abstract way and just don't tell your hubs that's what they are. I did a fox on the back of my Mountain View pull on and they're cute and no one ever comments on them. So it's not like they're really obvious. I mean, if they're looking at my booty, then they're probably not going to say anything anyway, but still, you know. Yeah, I, I should look at those templates. It would be really fun just to do like a bunch of them, you know? All right, so this is the little thing I'm experimenting with, this little corner here. I don't like it when these threads pull out of my pocket. You guys hear me gripe about that all the time. I'm just going to turn down the corner like this, tuck it in there, and secure it. There we go, get rid of my pins. They match my sewing, so there we go. So there you can see my little triangle barely. I feel like I have camera zoomed or something. Nice, Karen. Those look pretty good. I'm pretty eager to see how these are going to fit me and a little nervous. I was thinking that it would be fun to do a hack on a jeans where the back is elastic. Am I getting old is that I want elastic back pants? You guys, you tell me, right? You know, that sounds kind of nice. I think like, a cute little relaxed crop pant like this would be kind of cute that way. But I'm feeling like I'm heading into territory I probably shouldn't enter. All right, so I just fold down that corner again. I'm starting at the hem. Now, if you're doing just two rows of parallel stitching, you don't need to do this little step. You can do just two rows of parallel around. Now, I didn't talk once today about using those twin needle uh, denim top stitching needles. <clears throat> those are really handy. I can't use them on my machine. And you've heard me say this a billion times because I don't have uh, the throat plate that would accommodate that. It would be a big nightmare for me. There's room for one needle to go down in the hole. So make sure before you do that, that you have the proper presser foot on um, and uh, the proper throat plate. So you have the space for two needles to go down into your bobbin area at the same time. You only need one bobbin and it looks a little bit like surging on the underside, but it, it does make perfectly parallel stitching. Now, if you're gonna do it on the pocket, you might run into trouble when you get to these corners, because remember, your needles are gonna come down like this, and this needle is already too far down while well, this one's at the corner. And to turn, you'd have to back up this needle on top of itself. So you just need to do a single needle for that kind of stitching on anything that has an angle or some curves, tighter curves, so. Yeah, the button, I know, the button fly is not for the fast bathroom thing. But maybe, Dawn, if we did the uh, elastic back pant, added some extra ease across the back, put an elastic, they could be almost pull on and off. <laughs> right, Nancy? I know. Oh, my gosh, Sherry. <laughs> 
fine. If I ever make them, I'm not going to show you guys. <laughs> That's awesome, Rachel. I love the um, free range slacks. I think those look really nice. And I think actually if you do them in a, a little bit stiffer fabric, they're, they are even better. Um, I highly recommend if you want an elastic pair of pants that doesn't look really frumpy, try the free range slacks. They're really great. All right, so I'm doing my center back rise. Sorry, um, I forgot to say that. Uh, line up your yoke. If you're doing the denim pants, you'll really want to make sure if you have that contrast top stitching that you are lining it up. I would actually um, cheat here. If your top stitching matches up to it, to each other from left yoke to right yoke, um, but the seam doesn't, I would match the top stitching up because that's what shows, you know? You could totally do Velcro. Yeah, Sydney, they're really nice because that two inch wide elastic waistband it just makes it look slimmer. There's also, you can't tell, but there is a, um, a side panel in those pants that's shaped so that there's also some shape. I think between those and there's another one. I thought they looked the nicest. There's a few of them out there, but some of them don't have a side seam and I don't recommend that ever. <laughs> So, yeah, Nancy, I think the Mountain View jeans are pull-on jeans, and they are non-frumpy. They're pretty saucy, honestly, you know, than their toddler pants with the Velcro. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, really, Rachel? That sounds cute. I'm too short-waisted for those paper bags. But you can, you can um, if you did, like, a little bit shorter elastic, you can make the top quarter inch of that a little bit uh, roughly and that's kind of cute and it's not too cutesy you know what I mean yeah oh yeah Heather like a darted um ooh. who has a pattern like that okay so this is kind of where I always look at my top stitching on my front I know it's actually on the left here so because remember when these are right sides together and the rise matches up here you can go one of two ways you can match it with your top stitching on the same side or um, you can put it on the opposite side I go the opposite so that the juncture down here isn't too thick so in other words when you're facing your pants always stitch on the same one you know You take the knees of seven inches. Oh, man. Oh, the Pietra plant pants. That's a good idea. Yeah, Sydney, the Brussels washer linen would be really nice in those. I feel like, and maybe you don't have a little belly. I have a little belly. And I feel like when it's really soft and loose, everything is just kind of free-flowing there, <laughs> you know? So my, the ones I made in like true linen cotton canvas, like the, the Japanese ones, this is very, this is very loose and drapey, a little different than this. Um, like the one, like the kind you could get from cotton and steel. Those are my favorites to wear. They kind of hold everything together better. But I have some in a chambray, like a true chambray. Those are really comfortable. They get a little wrinkly. And they get a little wrinkly around my, my butt and belly, like where I've been sitting and stuff, and things get, you know, wrinkled. Um, and then I have a pair in a, uh, like a linen cotton, I think, that I got from Hearts Fabric. I actually think all three of my free range slacks, I got all the fabrics from Hearts Fabric. Yeah. Yeah, uh, good night, Dawn. See you later. Yeah, exactly, Heather. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I used to love those when I was younger. Yeah, I don't like the waistband either. Do you not like that feeling? Cause I don't, I don't like that. I, I think making jeans high waisted helps that. Yeah, that's awesome, Jan. I think I might look into that. 
Okay, so now we have our backs. Look how huge that booty is, dang. And then I have my fronts, and I'm gonna call it here, you guys. I know I told you I would do a complete sew through, but this is already a couple hours. We can finish these up tomorrow. So I know my schedule's a little off from that now. But um, we have now the side seams, the inseam, we're gonna do flat filled, and the waistband, and that's, that's quite a bit. I think I'll pin these together and try them on, see if I'm gonna be up against anything. The backs look kind of big, but I know the fronts are a little narrow. So, and then I'm gonna also put the cuffs on the bottom. <laughs> I love that washer linen though, Sydney. I love, absolutely love that fabric. It's, it's great for so many things. It has a lot of body. They would be very, it would be cute, but it'd be very, they'd be kind of wrinkly, you know? Oh, the Zadie jumpsuit. That'd be really cute in the chambray. Yeah, make sure to share. <laughs> You've made the lander pants. That's one of pair. I they don't have side seams, so that's a no go for me. Yeah, you might be straighter than I am, Heather. I can see why you'd want the um no waistband pants. That'd be that'd be nice. And I think that those free range would look good on you. You know, if you if that the lander company, if that silhouette works for you, they have a um a um elastic waist pant. You could try. But, be, but they're patch pockets. And I don't, I, for me, that looks a little bit juvenile. And so the, um, you don't get side seam pockets because I don't think there's a side seam on those. <laughs> I don't know. Jan says they're crazy. <laughs> Is what soft, Sherry? What are you asking? Who are you asking about? This is soft. This is really soft. <laughs> Landers have side seams. Okay, I might be mistaking. Oh, I'm thinking Persephone. I'm thinking Persephone. Sorry about that. Landers are no dude. I am not straight. Yeah. You and me both, sister. Yeah, it's the Persephone. Yeah, and I think that 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 their gathered one doesn't either. You know, um, do you guys know Kylie and the Machine? Kylie and the Machine, the label company. I'm pretty sure she just did a side by side comparison of three pairs of of gathered waist pants and she pitted um the free range the one by that person that did the persephone and then another company and i think like the one who did the persephone those look pretty good in a couple of the photos but she's not as close to the camera in a couple of them they're not the same no uh, no not the emersons the landers have darts, exactly, yeah. Okay, so um, you might, you guys might check those out. That uh, I thought that the all three had their merits, but I think that um, if you take into account how far she is from the camera, she tried to be identical, but they're a little bit different. Ah, oh, yeah, exactly, Sydney, right? I was really glad that the free range came, came out good in that because I really like those and I think it's so hard to see that side panel and that side panel really helps make those look classier than a regular um, elastic waist pant, you know? Yeah, I thought so too. I thought it did really good. Um, uh, Kylie and the Machine. You know when you see the fun sew-in labels that say, Yo Mama Sewed It? That company, Kylie, K-Y-L-I-E. She did a post in the last couple days where she sewed all three of those pairs of pants and she did a side-by-side -side picture comparison of all of them. I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah, so just Instagram, Instagram. Kylie and the machine. I'm right, right? That's the person. Now see, she's not shaped like me. So you gotta take that into consideration what your shape is. I'm much curvier. Right? Okay. Well, I'm going to eat some lunch. <laughs> and I'm going to sew some masks. 
And maybe I'm going to watch a movie while I do it because I deserve it, right? But I actually want to record a video today too. Oh, boy. So, yeah, yeah, check it out, Heather. You might get something out of that. It may make you lean one way or the other. Um, that was good to see you guys. So I'll see you guys tomorrow. We'll finish these up, and then I'm going to cut out the scout on Saturday. So, um, sorry, we're a little behind, but that's okay. We got all the time in the world, <laughs> right? <laughs> and if anybody is sewing Morgans, they can catch up to me. So, yeah, right, Jan? Good for me. We finished Ozark last night. <laughs> and that's all I'll say about that. And then, um, uh, what else? I'm, try I'm just watching all kinds of stuff. Yeah, you need to go to sleep, Mullen. Sleep well. And I feel like I have something else to tell you guys. Well, I did an unlock that thing on YouTube something called channel memberships. I'll look into that, but I feel like Patreon is the way to go because I can actually share content with you guys. You know, I can actually give you videos and patterns on there. So I'm going to look at it. I, I think it's just a way really to add some sort of paid subscription to the channel. And I'm not sure I'm going to do that yet. So give up on that. Yeah. Yeah. You're welcome, you guys. Oh, you guys are so sweet. <laughs> right, Nancy? <laughs> I know. I can handle that kind of disturbing. There's other things I can't. There's other shows I feel are really manipulative and I just don't watch them. You know, like, you know, but I, I do, I am getting to the point where I'm like, all right, we're rooting for the bad guys and I, I have, I have issues with that. <laughs> Tales from the Loop. Oh, that looks interesting. I started Devs. That was really interesting. My mom suggested I watch Nora from Queens. Aquafina's Nora from Queens. I watched two of those yesterday. I'm watching, well, I'm Walking Dead fan. I, I have to catch up on that. Um, I actually don't watch a lot of TV because I play games in the evening. Uh, but now I have a lot of production sewing. I'm getting caught up and I'm listening to a lot of books again, which is great. Um, maybe I should search that thing right there, huh? But, you know, when I put this together, I'm going to top stitch it down right i was thinking that the surging edge would actually cover it up so yeah right <laughs> and then yeah it'll get sandwiched in there it'll be fine oh malin that's such a great idea i loved voyager you guys like walking dead that's awesome i had to take a long break from that show did you have to take a long break, Nancy? And then did you stop? Because I had to. Negan came on the scene and I was shook. <laughs> I was not okay with that guy. Yeah, I love Next Generation too. That's my favorite. You listening to books? Ooh, I know. We need a book club. I've been listening to What Alice Forgot. It's by Leanne Moriarty. I like a lot of her books. This one is a little... A little um, unsettling because she bonks her head in the very first moments of the book and she loses 10 years of her memory like she forgets her kids I'm like no I mean in her mind she's fine right she's just like wow I've never been this thin like what made me into this exercise maniac you know yeah but Walking Dead I really love the people in Walking Dead oh with Glenn yeah shut on how's it going You've been making masks lately. We're about to sign off, Sharon. Sorry. Are you going live today? If anybody wants to watch Sharon uh, do pottery, he's on, live on Twitch and Instagram live sometimes and Facebook live. He's got all your bases covered. And he also does weaving. Um, he doesn't get much done, though, when we chat with him. <laughs> yeah, lots of trekkies here. Night, Claire. Thanks. I will eat well. I actually had to cut out sugar for a couple of days. <laughs> My daughter's baking so much. All right, you guys. Well, I will see you tomorrow. Um, we'll finish up the Morgan jeans here. They're coming along really nice, though, with the button fly and the pockets and all that. And then um, we'll do the scout tea after that. So I like Next Generation and YouTube Live, too. Wow. <laughs> I don't know how you do that. 
Kingdom on Netflix. Really, Rachel? Korean zombie show. Do I have to watch subtitles? It's hard when I'm sewing. Oh, you're welcome, Sharon. I hope it was helpful. My latest idea with masks is that I'm, I'm actually running the ties through my binding machine like this, the whole tie, and then I'm top stitching it to the edge of the mask. So like I finished my hemmed edge here. This is missing a piece of fabric. What the heck? Um, I top stitch this edge, or hem that edge, I hem this edge, I um, make my pleats, and then I attach this, top stitch it, and then fold it to the inside, top stitch it down. That's my latest thing, because I have no seconds when I do it that way. The binding is way faster. It's a little, like, a little tiny bit fussy, but it, I don't have any seconds. I had three hours of seconds fixing that first batch, and I'm not doing that again. Good night, Rachel. Yes. You do have to watch subtitles. I don't mind subtitles. I just don't want to get, I don't want to miss anything, you know, so... Maybe there's a dubbed version I could find. Okay, good. Yeah, I sometimes shorten the ties too. Good. All right, you guys. Well, I'll see you tomorrow. Oh, the t-shirt ties. Yeah. Those t-shirt ties are nice and soft. I feel like they're a good option. They don't feel like it when you're doing it, but they actually are a good option. So. All right, I'm going to say bye for the 12th time.